Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can make this parametric mesh inside Grasshopper using Kangaroo plugin. Uh, as you can see here, if I change the rectangle location, this is going to update. We can change the size of X and Y. The number of U count and V count, which I'm going to explain in this tutorial. And obviously the number of modules we're going to create, as you can see here, this is going to be the base. And whenever I change it, it's going to update and create the results. Okay, we can say we want maybe two of that. And maybe we want to create this longer. And finally, we can bake the mesh and create the final results. Okay, let's get started from scratch and learn this step by step. What I want to do here is to draw a rectangle, which is going to be the base of the module we're going to make. And I'm going to go to the params menu and pick up a curve. Right click and set one curve, select this one. And this is going to be the rectangle we're going to use. Uh, now what I want to do is to use the uh, mesh utility and the mesh surface. Let's go to full names the surface you want. So we can go to the params menu and connect the surface to the curve or rectangle and give that to the base. Uh, that is going to give us a UV mesh. Now we can control how many UV counts we want. So for example, three to 20. And if you delete the title and connect it, it's going to keep, uh, get the input's name. Okay, so it's going to be three by three and we can increase and decrease that by changing the slider. Okay, after creating this, uh, we are ready to use the Kangaroo plugin. So I'm going to go to Kangaroo. And for the main solver, what we can do here is to use the bouncy solver. I just want to show you that it's going to change the shape as we go forward. And I usually put the mesh into a params mesh container because that is going to help us to clean the algorithm. And whenever we want to, we can change the mesh and all the outputs are going to change, okay? So uh, now we can go to the Kangaroo plugin. Uh, the main goal I always use is a show. Use that. And because I want to give that to the goal object and there are different goals, I usually use set tree merge, data one, and I always flatten all of the inputs so they don't have group of inputs. So I'm going to go to the goal object. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you here is uh, the next goal is going to be kangaroo. We're going to fix it, these corners. Okay, so for example, we're going to fix these four corners here, 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 and here, and the rest can move up and deform. So I'm going to select these four points. For that, I'm going to go to the curve and select this discontinuity and get that here. These are going to be the corners, obviously. We have them here. Okay, so now we have to work with the vertices of the mesh. I'm going to go to the mesh and select deconstruct mesh to get the vertices. These are all of the vertices we have. Okay. And these are the corners. I'm going to go to vector point and select this closest points component. Uh, remember that this is closest points and not closest points because this one is going to uh, let you select how many points uh, are close to that uh, searching point. So I'm going to use that closest points. The point that is searching are these corners. They are searching in the cloud of points of the vertices of the mesh. And how many we want to is four. These are the count we want to uh, search for. So as you can see here, it's going to select the four corners and it's going to give you the index of the corners we need to work with. So I'm going to set list item, which is going to pick the vertices. And this is going to be the index I'm going to select. So as you can see here, these points have been selected and we're going to work with them as we go forward, okay? 
Another thing we have to do in the Kangaroo plugin is to go mesh use the edge length so it can be deformed easily. I'm going to bring these down and we can give the mesh towards the input here. And this is the second goal. The length factor can be zero so it can deform, for example. If I uh, give a button here, you can see that when I reset, it's going to deform the mesh, but it's going to go inwards. The uh, other thing we want to do here is, as you can see here, the output, first output is the mesh and the rest uh, are lines. So I'm going to select set list item and select the first mesh and turn this off. So that is going to show you only the output we're going to get. Okay. Now we can control things for the kangaroo. I'm going to go to goals point and anchor these points. That means that they are not going to deform. So I'm going to give that to D3. And here you can see that they are going to be fixed at the corners. And that's it. So as you can see here, if I put, for example, six here, it's going to select more points for the corners. I'm going to stick with four and go forward. Okay. Uh, another thing is that all of the other mesh uh, points can move up in the Z direction. So I'm going to use the goals point anchor X, Y, Z. And that it means that we can say that the rest of those points uh, can only move in the Z direction. And we don't want to move them in the X, Y. So just click here, invert. And invert means that the input is going to be true. And that means that the movement in the X direction is locked. So we're going to lock the X, uh, for example, this point can't move in the X direction, can't move in the Y direction, and the only uh, available movement is going to be in the Z direction. That's going to bring them up. So how can we find them? We can go to set sequence call index. And for the vertices we have, from the deconstruct mesh, we can say, okay, delete all of the rest of those corners here. And we can flatten it here. You have to flatten it. So we have all of them gone. And as you can see here, the only thing left is the points, which is inside the mesh and the boundary. And also we didn't mention the corners. So we can say, okay, these points, and use that in D4 and flatten that. Okay. Obviously, because this is, there are no forces bring it up, we have to also add a kangaroo goes mesh vertex load, which we can say that it's going to bring the mesh up. Again, flatten the input. The mesh is going to be this mesh. And we can give a strength to that. A positive number is going to be upwards. And here you can see that it's going to bring it up. You can just turn this off. And as you see here, this is going to update the results. And the corners are fixed. If I put this to 6. And we have to reset simulation going to have more corners fixed okay so the problem here is that we have to reset the button all the times what i have done here is use a code uh, that i found which you can use instead of the reset button uh, this python script is uh, from anders de Lauren, and it's a simple code that says that uh, is the save values the same as the current value and it gives an true false output so here you can see that uh, the reset is a button we've selected uh, you just don't have to give anything to the reset save values and the current value is anything you want to change to uh, trigger this python script we have used the math mass addition which is going to add all of the inputs we have and a number with a flatten so i'm also going to put this wire display to hidden so we don't see the cables and i give that to the reset okay this is just a reset simulation uh, a button here but this th this is the good part we can give any changing outputs to here so for example this curve if i use the shift key or add it to the number it's going to get the length of this so whenever i change it it's going to update okay you can see that when i don't give that to the input 
and change the rectangle, it's not going to work. So this is the only solution I found, which is really useful. And if this doesn't work, just find the code you want for the reset to just trigger every time you change it. So that's not really that hard and you can get it done by this part. Okay, uh, another thing we want to change is the number of U divisions. So I'm going to use the shift key and add it to the simulation. This one, anything left here? No, uh, the goal is going to update. So this is not really the, uh, the number slider you want to give here. And now you can see that when I change that, it's going to update, okay? If you want to make the rectangle also parametric, you can use the curve primitive rectangle. And let's just give this a number slider too. For the X size and the Y size, I'm going to just delete that. Again, if you want to add that, use the shift key and add this to the resetting input. That's a good practice. And now we're good to go. Okay, now that we have this module, and remember that you can also change the number of UVs, we have the mesh as an output and we can make a transform rectangular array. The cell you want to give, which is a rectangle, you can give that rectangle here. I'm going to make this wire display hidden. And let's give this a count. So for example, one, two, six. Number of counts. Okay. So the problem here is that, as you can see here, if I bake these meshes, they have a seam that is not connected. If I zoom in, you can see that this is not uh, completely connected together. And the reason here is that Kangaroo is going to use this XY locking mechanism, just like an approximation for that. So how can we fix it? This is really easy. You just have to work with the Kangaroo again. Use this time the zombie solver. Uh, we have to make goals again. To make it a good practice, I'm going to use the show again for the mesh. Uh, what I want to do here is to only use the naked vertices. So let's go to kangaroo, mesh, naked vertices. And we have this here, naked points. Uh, a technique I found here is to use the surface extrude and extrude this rectangle upwards. I'm going to explain what I'm going to do here. Wire display hidden, and just extrude that really high based on your project. You have to extrude it in the Z direction. Okay, just high so we get out of the shape, okay? And here you can see that the shape is a little bit out from the rectangle. So we want to snap it towards the rectangle. And we can do that by using a CP, closest point, BREP, point, BREP. And as you can see here, these points are obviously on that, but here these points, because they can move, you can see that they're going to project, if I can show you here, with a good amount of, here we go, you can see that we have them here and they are a little bit different, right? In the distance, you can see that they are near zero, but not completely zero. So that is going to be the snapping mechanism. And I'm going to go to Kangaroo and use the goals point anchor and say, okay, bring those points towards this point we need as a target. And that's going to be the goal. Use the shift key flatten. 
Let's see if it's the first output. Yes, this item. And that is going to be the fixing parts. Now we can just use this as the cell. So if I bake that, yeah, you can see that we don't have any problems with the connection and it's completely connected. Another way you can uh, see this working is by going to the mesh, joining the mesh together to make one mesh, and then also using the utility mesh weld vertices to bring all of the vertices into one, especially if they are near. And this is going to be the final mesh. If I want to show you the difference is that this is the joint mesh and this is the welded mesh and the vertices has decreased here, right? So if I bake it, if you don't see any edges, that is the correct mesh we have, which is really great. But if I don't do that using the zombie solver and just give this to the geometry and bake this, You can see that we have some edges that are not welded. And the reason was that small distance we have here, right? So remember that we had to do that to get a clean mesh output at the end. And now we are good to go. If I just change this, the rectangle, this is the module. Uh, the resolution you want. Amount of Z movement. And also reset the simulation with that. Uh, number of... This one is not really important, so I'm going to just put this 1000. That means the extrusion is really high, so we get good results. The number of number of divisions we need here. Okay. And we just increase the vertex load and get the final results. Maybe we need to increase that Y size a little bit. And that's how we can make it. I'm just going to add another row to that. And finally, I can bake this mesh. You can also download this example file from our website and use it in your project, you can see that these are just on the ground.